afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Ran, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Sunday, May Day, May 1st, 2022, after 3 p.m. Eastern. Quiet your head and listen to what your heart most needs to say today. Trust this message. Really listen to it. And now, the heart chakra is the great spiritual door to the divine. Remember, the door is always open. In order to acquire anything in the physical universe, you have to choose to relinquish your attachment to it. In order to acquire anything in the physical universe, you have to relinquish your attachment to it. It doesn't mean you give up your intention to create your desire. And you don't give up the desire. You give up your attachment to the result, Deepak Chopra. In order to acquire anything in the physical universe, this physical universe, you have to choose to relinquish your attachment to it. And it doesn't mean that you give up your intention to create your desire. And you don't give up the desire. You give up your attachment to the result. Most of us, I would, I would say, I'd dare to venture to say that all of us would like to manifest a life that is abundant with love, filled with peace, and overflowing with positive feelings. You can create a deeply nourishing healing life for yourself. And it isn't really that hard. The trick begins with the decision to master your mind. Just be willing to make space for a feeling of mastery of it in your life. Often the mind thinks like a beggar, and it cannot tap into the vast infinite realm of resources that are everywhere around it. It is only when the mind stops seeking, starts relaxing into itself, that it becomes rooted in the most empowered, authentic, divine expression of what we truly are, and can manifest whatever we want with effortless ease. Manifesting is an art form and a metaphysical science which deals with how naturally and effortlessly we can allow our desires to show up in the physical world. Basically, manifesting just happens when you get crystal clear on what it is that we want. Remove any limiting or negative thoughts about receiving it. Hold the intention. That's important. Remove any limiting or negative thoughts about receiving it. Hold the intention. It's now coming your way. And take massive inspired action following our intuition. Manifesting is really not difficult to do. In fact, we manifest things every day without realizing we are doing it. We desire a pizza and call the pizza guy. And it's delivered hot and fresh to the door, 15 minutes. Yet when it comes to bigger desires that feel beyond our realm of resources, we tend to fall into old old, old limiting belief systems that stop us from believing that our dream is possible. One of the greatest secrets that many have discovered to becoming a manifesting master in this life is learning how to live in a state of detachment from the mind. Learning how to live in a state of detachment from the mind. This means you realize that you are not these desires or thoughts that pour through the mind, yet you are the witness and consciousness behind it all. Detachment, in this sense, does not mean indifference, apathy, or lacking excitement for your desires. It's not a feeling of disconnection, isolation, or some strategy for creating a false disconnected state so that you can later achieve your desire and become momentarily 
happy. Having the intention to manifest the desire and being detached from the outcome is a very fine, thin line to walk. And learning to dance along it makes you into a manifesting master. Everything you want in this life manifests effortlessly from this place of healthy detachment. It is a spiritual practice from feeling connected to the infinite source in all things, who you truly are. From this deeply connected space, you don't need to become attached to any thought or thing. This type of detachment comes simply from quieting your mind chatter and connecting with your heart and soul. Your soul is already perfectly aligned with the entire universe, inherently abundant, extremely confident, and deeply at ease with all aspects of yourself. When you're in tune with your soul, you feel relaxed, centered, and can find stillness within your body. Now, your mind is then delighted here and lives in a state of gratitude for all that is, and are okay with any result that may or may not occur. When we recognize that nothing has to go right for us to be happy, and that people don't have to behave for us to love them, our walk home can become surprisingly simple. You practice. The inability to be detached is the main hindrance. The inability to be detached is the main hindrance to manifesting our desires. If we are super clear about what we want in this life and we have no resistance to receiving it, our desire will manifest within a very short time. Yet, if we feel disconnected from our soul we need the outcome to find happiness and inner peace and the body falls lower in vibration we feel we need to work overtime to arrive at our destination and live from a place of stress inside when we are vibrating at a higher soul level it's actually effortless to manifest any outcome or circumstance it basically shows up in your life because we are so connected and thus available to it. True detachment is a very advanced state to live from because you are allowing yourself to be absorbed in a deep trust, a deep trust with life. You are totally surrendered to this connection with your highest power an infinite creative energy within. There is no need to try to achieve any outcome or fall into a state of lack or neediness about anything anymore. You know you, are, you already have access to an infinite resource of intelligent power which can attract everything you need. You are simply happy within yourself and your life as it is. And you can feel it to the core of your bones. The more you can practice relaxing into your soul, the more you naturally open yourself to this meeting with the magical manifesting world around you. Through the deepest release and sweetest surrender, you find your personal intimate connection with the all-intelligent, all-powerful, deeply eternal loving, creative source, God, that flows through us all. The more you practice this, you establish a relationship with it and eventually find real peace with everything that occurs. There is no need to worry, hope, or fear anything in the future. You simply feel connected to the entire universe and all its glory and awesome power and can feel okay with every single thing that occurs. By spending time developing your intimate connection with the source that flows through every breath you take, every movement you make, you begin to feel it is everywhere you are. 
from this ever-present state, you just know you are always on the right path and can never, never, never make a mistake. You stop believing in coincidence because you know that each moment is perfect, divinely synchronized, and contains the magical resources to manifest any desire you wish to materialize. The manifesting then turns into this fun, creative, mysterious spiritual game to enjoy, instead of some serious achievement affair where positive results are needed to make you happy. These are a few of the signs that you are on the path to becoming a manifesting master. And as Buddha has said, attachment leads to suffering. It's a good thing to remember that attachment is the number one cause of suffering in this world. Attachment is the number one cause of suffering in this world. Whenever we are suffering about anything on a mental, emotional, or physical level, it is certain that we are attached to some thought inside ourselves about something. Attachment in the most raw definition means we cannot surrender to trust and let go. We are clinging out of fear and losing the outcome we desire. We can, we can be afraid of losing anything in life, all based on our wounding and karma from the past. When we discover how to trust in the state of detachment, we find the spiritual state of connection and our manifesting abilities ascend to an entirely new level. When we discover how to trust in the state of detachment, we find the spiritual state of connection and our manifesting abilities ascend to an entirely new level. Attachment is a form of poverty consciousness which stems out of feeling disconnected to our spiritual source. Out of desperation, we attach ourselves to certain thoughts, beliefs, people, and habits, and hope that a certain positive source-like feeling will manifest and bring in all the happiness and satisfaction we were missing. This approach is obviously coming from ego that fearful needy place which deep down is neglecting and ignoring its innate connection to source the ego is always desperate and always trying to make you feel secure because it's too busy to relax into the deeply eternal loving source that is here now the great cosmic joke, of course, is that the source is always right here, right now, and always available to tap into. When you become free from the mind's attachment to anything, you start feeling the infinite love and energy within this source and know exactly how easy it is to manifest any life you desire. When you are non-attached to the mind, and are feeling connected to your soul, your core identity remains centered with the infinite source instead of your ego. You realize that you are the source of love, peace, and empowerment. It is not found outside you, yet from within. From this enlightened space, your ego takes a step down and simply feels grateful for life just as it is. Then, the universe seems to hand over every wish, want, and desire you have. It does this for mere joy of feeling your heart soften more and to see the smile on your face become bigger. The only time surrender is not is in the presence of ego. Love does not resist itself because there is nothing and no thing outside it to resist. Just make peace with the mind in every moment and you will experience total bliss. Angela Walker. Behind every fear, anxiety, and pain, an attachment is hiding. 
if you are unsure where it is or what exactly you are attached to in this life, just check your body. A feeling of tension, clenching, or anxiety always appears. A feeling of tension, clenching, or anxiety always appears. Talk with that part of your body. Listen to it closely for a few minutes, and eventually you will notice a message inside the tense, tight, or contracted sensation. The more you understand the reason for these attachments, the easier it is to step back from them and not buy into their story. Freedom from attachment is a healing process. When you are truly free, it means you'll have tons of extra time, love, energy, to consciously manifest the life your heart really desires. The process to shift out of any attachment is this. First, to identify where it is located in the body. Breathe into the tight sensation. Feel the pain. Listen to its story. Let go of its story. And relax into the source beyond it all. And repeat this until the tension story are gone. It helps to remember that happiness does not depend on anything in the outer world. Yet your level of surrender to your heart's connected to the source within, the more often you practice this surrender, the less chance you will ever get attached to anything again. Every moment is an opportunity to release those hidden attachments, stopping any of us from manifesting our dreams. Yet sometimes they are tricky to find. If you are accustomed to living with stress and tension each day, and your mind is too loud to hear what its message is for you, Simply look inside yourself and ask, who is attached? Where do I feel I am lacking in my life that is causing me to be overly hooked into this particular thought, belief, assumption, or outcome? What is that missing part of me that desperately needs X, Y, Z, to manifest in order for me to be happy. It is valid to remember that it is always your mind that is attached and not you. It is always your mind that is attached and not you. You are not your mind. You are the soul who is eternal, infinite, unbounded, and cannot be attached anything. The more clear we can become about what we are attached to in life and why, the more enlightened we become. When we can identify the lacking feelings we are holding on to, we stop blaming the world for how we feel and reclaim our power again. Seeing what actually is creating our need for attachment is the key to unleashing our freedom. The limiting feelings we regurgitate about ourselves are the secret gateways to forming new paradigms of being and seeing reality. We have the power within ourselves to release our blocks right now and thus attract any desired outcome in this life that we choose. We no longer need to engage in states of unnecessary suffering ever again. You are given the gifts of the gods. You create your reality according to your beliefs. Yours is the creative energy that makes you it makes your world. There are no limitations to the self except those you believe in, Seth. So this week, this coming week, 
you, I'm giving you an invitation to recognize all your attachments each day and let them go. Every one of them. And I don't mean through the ego mind, I mean through the heart mind. You just let them go. Breathe into your body to deep, so deeply that there is no more room for the mind to enter. Be free from the mind. Let yourself feel into the still, calm, ever-loving source that is beneath all needy feelings. Whenever you feel stuck, just ask the magic question, what am I attached to? It's that simple. Whenever you get stuck, ask the one question, what am I attached to? As soon as you see it, let it go by simply making the choice to surrender to trusting in something much greater than you. It is about letting go of every limiting belief that you are attracted or attached to and choose to find real freedom in your life. Reconnect with your soul, the infinite presence in you, and be free from all attachment forever. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted. I'm sure that we all are. And the first thing that we care to do is relax these bodies. Head to toe inside now. The way we do that is, is through our breath. Breath is magical. You know, we the gods enter these bodies. We power them up, so to speak. The breath begins to generate. Sustain, help sustain this physical vessel so that we, the gods, can experience it. So whenever you focus on your breath, it's an, it's an easy, slow inhale through the nose and an easy, slow exhale through the mouth. You focus on the breath, and the breath moves you out of the mind and the ego and the subconscious mind. You still it. And as you're focused on the breath, you're in the now. And what does the now do? You don't have any attachments in the now. You have no expectations in the now. Zero. We generate 60,000 plus thoughts a day, each one of us, 24-7. Right? We don't necessarily know every thought that we send out to the universe. But that disappears. All our mind chatter that we all have 24-7, that disappears too. The influence of the ego mind, the subconscious mind, that disappears too. Of ten, ten, tens of millions, billions, of programs, thoughts, right? Call them pro, pro programs. And they fly by like clouds in the sky. We don't, that's gone too. We're in total focus within ourselves. And this is what happens when you practice being in the now. But see, society on this planet and the physical material world distracts us all the time so that the ego is there mastering us, telling us what to do, how to do it, when to do it. Got to have it, got to have it, got to have it. What are we going to do if we don't have it? What's going to happen if we don't get it? When everything that you could ever desire is at your, is at your own beck and call, the only thing that happens to us is, is that we let the ego mind in to oversee us, and it's always temporary. Our needs and desires are usually never fulfilled because it's always more. It's not enough. We have to have more. And that's what happens. So it's all about the now. The ego mind can't be in the now. It won't exist. Do you see why it does everything it can to keep us out of the now? Sometimes we'll float off. A lot of times we'll float off. 
we grab one of those program thoughts and then we're off and then we create into reality and experience it. Now this is a time where we remind ourselves to be of the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal gratitude, 24-7, infinity and beyond. Also to be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with ourselves, 24-7, infinity and beyond. So when this does happen, because it happens to all of us, we float off, right? And it's not like we do it intentionally. We don't. It's just the ego mind, and we just float off, grab on one of those thoughts. When we're doing this, the, the key is, is to acknowledge it and very softly and gently say, not a biggie. I'll focus on my breath, and I'll be in the now. Every time I do that, I'll be in the now 3,000% of the time, which is every time. It takes practice because we've been so conditioned to be not in the now, but in the future or the past, past, the future, future, past, past, future. That's how it works. And that's where we suffer. So it's absolutely paramount, and it's our choice. No one chooses for us. We choose for ourselves. Practicing staying in the now. All the rest of the stuff comes to you with ease. And you aren't expecting and you aren't attached to the outcome of it. You just know deep down inside that, hey, it'll be here. Now you picture yourself standing in front of three paths. You look at the paths and you notice that the trees have formed a golden canopy over each path. Trees, you know, the leaves are shimmering gold, the bark, the branches, everything. You notice that each path looks, has a brilliant, bright, emerald green flaming grass. Appears to be grass. And you look at all of them, and they're pretty much the same, except the one on the left, which is the past, is really worn. The same with the one on the right, the future. The one you're standing in front of is the now, and it looks brand new. Why is that? How come the one in the middle isn't worn? Because the ego mind controls most of the people on this planet. The ego mind is front and center. The ego mind keeps us either in the future or the past, past or the future. It does everything it can to keep us out of the now. It makes us feel uncomfortable to be in the now. It's got a lot of tricks and traps for us. You can't be in the now. How are you going to plan anything? How are you going to set your goals? How are you going to achieve anything? See? You're a fool because you're only living in the now. What are you going to do tomorrow? Okay. Fear. So, but we reminisce. All of us do. None of us are exempt. It could be anything. You could be just in a melancholy mood. And a, th a thought comes in about, you know, something that you did and really enjoyed it, and it was phenomenal, and you'd like to do it again. We also will visit things that remind us to not do the same thing again and expect the same result, expect different results. So we learn. We we kind of it's kind of a reference library at times our paths. And we you know we'll go in into our library which all of us have which are massive, and you know the subconscious mind stores everything there, everything copies everything, past lives, future lives, present. Every experience, all of it, not only yours, but all kinds of other people. So we go in there, we turn on the light, open the door, turn on the light. And we look for walls, but there's no walls. It's so massively big and expansive. And we look at the ceiling, there's no ceiling. It's so large. Can't see it anyway. So we grab some movies and some pictures and some books. And we sit in our easy chair and we'll watch some of the movies, read some of the books, and look at some of the pictures and have a good time. 
But we don't stay there. We'll, we'll put everything back on the shelf. We'll turn the light off, shut the door, move forward in life. And on occasion, we do that. But some of us will stay there so darn long, and I don't believe that it's consciously aware. I believe it's unconscious. But we stay there so long that we end up bringing the past into a future that doesn't exist, creating that future from that past and reliving that past in that future. That's why a lot of people will say no matter what we do, we always seem to end up here. Now, all of us will go into the future. We get antsy. We get anxious, hurried, um, impatient. And so we'll go into the future because we want to know things. We want to know things. We want to know when this is going to happen. We want to know when that's going to happen. We want to know when, I'm, when you're going to get this, when you're going to get that, when, and so on and so forth. Lots and lots of questions. Now, we don't get answers, right? What happens? We seek external authority to tell us what's going to happen. You know, what, 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 you know it's like, when am I going to get that job, a better paying job? When am I going to have a better boss? When, when am I going to have enough money to enjoy my life? When am I going to stop being so sick so I can enjoy my life? And it just is incessant. It just continues on and on and on and on. So we'll, we'll see external, external authority that will, certain people that do tarot and astrology chart readings and everything, and we either believe it or we don't. And so we listen, and those that say, wow, I, that's exciting, I, I, I can't wait. So we form an attachment to it. And when the time comes, as we were told, right, nothing happens. So we're disappointed, let down. Well, I'm never going to that person again. They didn't know what the heck they were talking about. Took my money and did the reading, and nothing happened. And then there's other people that say, well, this sounds great. You know, it, it, it'll be great. And they put faith and trust in the, through the heart mind and leave them alone and go about their business and stay in the now. And it shows up. And they weren't thinking about it, but it shows up. When they don't pay all this attention on all these things and worry, stress, and fear, and suffer, that's when it all flows. That's when the, your vibrational frequency is high enough to meet the flow of abundance that the universe has been sending you and continues as long as you're in that body. You know, if you were to look in that body, because you know you're not the body, right? You're not the character, the personality, the name. You're not your status in life. You're the God. So you see these seven lights from the tailbone to the top of the head. What are they? What are these seven lights? They're spirit etheric energy. We are spirit etheric energy, omnipotently powerful. Now these are called chakras on this planet. Definition of chakra is wheel, wheels of life. They're connected to all of the operating, uh, all of the operations of the body. Motion, ego, stress, fear, anxiety, worry, happiness, joy, bliss. All the organs, all the way down to the quantum core. When we acknowledge the fact that we, we, are, we are God within the body, then we're half of the way there to discovering we can heal these bodies. And we will get to the point where we are so aware that we'll heal them in a blink of the eye. Because, see, when you're in the now, the body lets go. It, it's not clenching and pulling and gripping and hugging and not letting go. It's, it lets go. The stress, the fear, anxiety, worry. And every time the ego mind comes in, all you have to say is just in a soft way. Ego mind, you're not in charge here. And it'll disappear. It'll keep coming, keep time to come back. But you just rebut it. Ego mind, you're not in charge here. Now, you know, we understand that the only, that all of us that attend these global guided meditation calls, 
are consciously aware to a certain extent, which means that we know we are of and from the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest deepest, purest of the purest purest, eternal love. And we know that when we enter these bodies as the souls, the gods, the kingdom of God that we are, the pure consciousness, we are heaven on earth. Heaven the soul, body earth, heaven on earth. Literally. Every step we take, we create paradise. And we shine a light. And where is that light? It's within the body. It's the God that we are. Pure consciousness, God, however you label it. God source and that's the love and you can blast that light anywhere anytime for, for however long infinity and beyond I mean we've got we've got over 8 billion humanoids we have Billions of other gods housed in different physical forms to experience them, all teaching each other, learning from each other. So if you were to take Starship off this planet, looked at it, so I mean, get to the point where it's about the size of a basketball, you go far enough out, you see that it glows. I mean, really glows. And you look at the lights around the universe, and they all pale in comparison to this planet. It's like a, a lit candle in a dark room. Dim, dim, dim. Now, we do know that there are parts of ourselves, the gods that we are, that are asleep. Stone cold asleep. They'll wake up in their own time. We deeply love them. It's just the same as we deeply love the parts of ourselves that are awake, the God that we are. And that's all the light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. Numbers are in the Googleplexes. Uh, one Googleplex fills this universe with not even one square inch of sacred space to spare. Googleplexes, there's trillions of them. Trillions of universes. That's all of the archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, the archetypes. Ascended masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, St. Germain, Sananda, Christ, El Moria, Abedantia, Tel, Thoth, Yama, Yeshua, all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, Agartha, and beneath earth. All of our loved ones who have sent out a body in this lifetime and all lifetimes we've inhabited. All the off-worlders, galactics, and celestials. Now, light energy beings, with the eyes that we have with these bodies, we don't see all the light spectrums and all the light energy beings in those spectrums. They come in shapes, colors, sizes, forms, configurations, of which we don't see. Infrared, red, you know, violet, ultraviolet, super green, blue. But there is a group okay, that we are familiar with. And there's a part of this group that these bodies we're in are super dependent on. Fairies, sprites, elves, gnomes, dwarves, trees, trolls, elementals, magics, earth, air, water, fire, ether, wood, mermaid, dolphin, whale, pegasus, unicorn, centaur, minotaur. Ask your body that you're in. Can you survive without water, without air, without fire, without earth, without ether, without wood? Can can you survive this? And the answer is no. You, the God, would have to leave this body. You would be forced out of it. So we're, these bodies are very dependent on the elementals. Now the ascended master they have ascended into physical form. They have mastered physical form. They have ascended out of physical form. They hold pure consciousness, God form. We have ascended into physical form. We're in the process of mastering physical form. We are creating our experiences to perfect our creation. 
The archangels, cherubim, seraphim, archetypes, their civilization vibrate a different frequency than we do. That's why we don't see them like we see each other. But the, the, the God within their body and the God within our body is one. They know we have amnesia. Right? So they do everything they can to get us to remember. So they send us messages. You know, they'll show up and we'll be in conversations with them and it'll dawn on us after the conversation, hey, that was an angel. Then you feel a little bit of the bliss inside that'll bubble up. Now, the one message that they send us in many different ways and have for tens of thousands of years is, isn't it an absolutely magnificent, glorious, stupendous, spectacular, splendiferous, wonderful, miraculous to be alive in these bodies? Because we don't have a point of reference because of our amnesia. So we, it's like a rediscovery of how phenomenal these bodies are that we can experience all the physicalities of these bodies. Because when we leave these bodies, we don't look like the same body that we just left. We're a ball of omnipotently powerful energy. Now, we don't eat, we don't sleep, right? We don't make love, we don't hold hands, we don't kiss, we don't laugh, we don't cry. We don't eat and enjoy a meal. We don't do any of that. We don't walk through the park and take in the sights and the visions and everything and feel the wind against our face. We, f we don't experience any of that in our true God form. This is where you start discovering how to be in deep gratitude 24-7, infinity and beyond. How to be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with oneself 24-7, infinity and beyond. Now, they can surround any one of us at any one time in the tens of thousands, tens of millions, more. The reason is, is because, because of their vibrational frequency, they can hold a large number in a small area. And if you'd like them to ask, and within a split second, they'd be all around you, and you'd be in bliss. Now, the off-worlders, the galactics, the celestials. Remember, we're in a solar system that has over, uh, over 160 planets. About 1,000 species, uh, civilizations travel through this solar system every day. Trillions throughout the universe is every day. We're familiar with a small group. The Adians, Syrians, Arcturians, Andromedans. Felines, Zeta Reticula, Nords, Graves, Anunnaki, Draco, Reptilian, Golden Pyramid, Avion. This particular group has been assisting us in our evolution, in our enlightenment, ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. Now, knowing that we're all one, whether it's 9,000 billion light years away, doesn't we're all one. The body gives us the impression that we are separate. That's the illusion. To keep us distracted and never figure out who and what we truly are. We're focused on this planet. The specific reason is, is for the complete liberation from all lower dark matter survival matter frequencies to inherently increase our vibrational frequency into the higher and the higher higher deeper and the deeper deeper and the purest the purest purer of eternal love gratitude peace and this is what we're doing and there's no escape from it and it affects all life the highest supreme value in the universe in the physical form. So we're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, 
tranquility, benevolence, prosperity, abundance. And we're all one. And we're all God. And we're all love. And our God force, love, light, energy is in everything. All that there is ever, will be ever, beyond, and forever. Continues to intensify, grow, and expand. We immediately form a massive white fire, circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia, Aria, and this now. This emanates from the gods in these bodies that we are. Pure love. It floods, saturates, permeates this planet head to toe inside now. There is no escape. It is everywhere. Down to the quantum quark and beyond. Now, as we ascend above the planet, we're immediately met with this massive ocean of glitter. And this ocean of glitter is nothing like anything we would depict on this planet in any of the oceans. So we choose things that we have experienced and we intensify them, such as a massive grand finale fireworks display. Except this was a trillion times more intense and a trillion times larger. Same with a laser light show grand finale display. And then the same with the ballroom globe and, and its representation of all light. It floods all space, whatever light you shine upon it, with the mirrors. This one's a trillion times more intense and a trillion times larger. When you combine all of these into one massive crescendo, then you're near the description of the, the ocean of glitter. Now, we look at all of the reflective points, which are everywhere. And we, we see and notice that these little tiny microscopic mirrors, perfectly etched, and we enter them. And we discover that all of us, doesn't matter where we are in, in space, we're all one. And we interact. We learn. We teach. We teach. We learn. We're learning from each other all the time, 24-7 infinity PM. It, it, it is endless. It's infinity. It's everything. And how do we do that? Well, we learn from each other, right? Each of us in humanoid form. If we choose to, if we choose not to be distracted uh, to the, from the material physical world and we enter the now, we, we can interact and understand. What am I learning from this person? Or what am I learning from this situation? Not only that, we learn from all different forms of physical representation. Gods enter all kinds of physical representations to experience them. It could be a tree, a bush, grass, a pig, a cow, a horse, a dog, a cat, a bird, a bug. It doesn't matter. We do it to experience the physical form. That's it, period. It's how we learn. So you, could, you, 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 know, you can look at just about anything and know what it's like to be it when you go into stillness and focus on the now and the breath. You'll know, whatever it is, what it's like to be that. And the more of us that choose to go within and stay within, we will discover this. This is another part of discovery that through our amnesia we don't remember. We're immediately met with the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all. The gods that we are within these bodies, that we are the power of healing. We're then met with the violet blue purple flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all of our, um, the gods that we are within these bodies, of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. We're then met with the white fire. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all that we are protected, infinity and beyond, head to toe, inside and out, with a white fire armor. And like the armor on this planet, way beyond that, it emanates from the gods that we are within these bodies. Pure, deep, eternal love. Highest of the highest high vibrational frequency. No invasion, no intrusion, no penetration from lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies, demon possession, attachments, or anything. Ever, ever, ever. But only you. Only you. 
Only you have the power. That if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency, whether it's conscious or unconscious, through hatred, anger, greed, fear, worry, anxiety, envy, hurriedness, impatience, you will create a breach. You will lower your vibrational frequency low enough or you'll create a breach in your white fire armor. Enough so to allow lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come flooding in. Then all there's all kinds of possibilities. Being possession, attachments, all kinds of things. Now if you do decide to do this, you're immediately met with a double column of light. We created this double column of light to remind us all the first part of the column is the purple transmuting flame. This reminds us that we can use the purple transmuting flame. We can bring it in. We can transmute all these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutral light substance, sending them to pure consciousness where they are, no more. We're then met with the second half of this double column of light, the violet ray. We created this part of the column of light to remind us all that we can bring in the violet ray right behind the purple transmuting flame, cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies were, sealing the breach in our white fire armor and restoring our vibrational harmony to the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal love, gratitude, and peace. We are then met with the golden white pink light. This is a column of light that we created, the gods that we are, to remind us that we are the sun, the sunlight, the rain, the rainbows, the sun sets, the sun rises, the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, the streams, the trees, the forests, the soils, the skies, the clouds. mountains were everything everything is us always have been always will be ever beyond and forever so the next time that you see you witness anything that you would say that is absolutely beautiful look at that it is because it's you the god that you are in that body we are not separate from it so when you look at it next time anything mountain view ocean front rainy day, doesn't matter. That is the God that I am. Through the heart mind, not the ego mind. That is the God that I am. Look at that lake. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, it is. That's the God that I am. Whole different understanding. Remember, the illusion is separation. We continue to ascend above the planet. Some of us decide, if we're carrying physical form, we decide to step outside the physical form, however, effortlessly above it. The reason we do this is because, number one, it's really fun, and we can. We're immediately met with this massive crystal light tower. We created this tower, larger than the solar system and beyond. And in the center of the column of the tower, we discover this massive oblong sphere. In the center of the sphere, we discover this humongous golden white ball of light. In turn, it is surrounded by multicolored rings of light, infinity and beyond. This creates this magical, mystical, super bright reflecting cloud, white. And it's absorbed through our heart minds. And it feels like a warm embrace that never ends. Then we discover that the golden white ball of light is the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal love. Then comes well-being, gratitude, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, massive prosperity, and massive abundance. And then we discover that all of that is a reflection of the gods that we are within these bodies.
Now, at the top of the tower, we decide that so that the golden ocean can come cascading down 24-7, infinity and beyond, 360 degrees. What is the golden ocean? It's pure, deep, eternal love. It's what we all are made of, the gods that we are. Pure consciousness. And it's flooding this planet. And it is fading, saturating, permeating all life, the highest supreme value in the universe. Now, we're drops of this golden ocean. We also hold the essence of this golden ocean. Golden ocean is the drops, drops of the golden ocean. And the only illusion is separation. We see our meditative sphere. It's that center circle. We all created this sphere over four years ago. It holds all of our meditations in perpetual motion. They continue to grow, intensify, and expand. These are almost 1,900 of these meditations, every day, seven days a week for over four years. Hundreds of millions of us off and on world. And the, and the intent is what? Pure, deep, eternal love, gratitude, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, prosperity, abundance. Flooding this planet. You can see, you can see, through your heart, minds, whenever you choose, when you go into silence, you go into the now through your breath, and through your heart, mind's motion picture, you see this debris, this jet black, I mean super black, goop, leaving the planet all over the surface. That includes the AI goop that hides all of it. Because of the higher and higher and higher vibrational frequencies, it cannot adhere itself anywhere. So it's disrupted. It loses its stickability. And so you watch as it keeps everywhere. It's going off planet. It's moving up into the atmosphere. And you see that the atmosphere is a, it's a, it's a transparent, shimmering, golden white pink light and it's everywhere and and these this black goop that's coming off the planet it's hitting this it's going through it you can see as it's going through it it, it begins to break apart and disintegrate and any vestige left of it that gets into the upper atmosphere where we see the sky right and we don't see a blue sky we see this super bright white golden pink light everywhere and so any remnants of this black goop that does make it to the upper atmosphere is absolutely banished. Not even a quantum quark left. It's absorbed into the collective consciousness where it is no more. You see? Watch this happening. It's happening now. Has been. Will continue to do so. And even after all of this goop is gone, it will continue to shed its light upon the planet and all life, the highest supreme value in the universe, to ensure those that are awake and aware can ascend effortlessly into higher dimensional frequencies of pure, deep, eternal love, gratitude, and peace. The greatest spiritual energy in this entire universe the greatest spiritual energy in, the, in this entire universe is inside you, right here and now. There is nothing you can do to diminish, taint, or change this ever-present spiritual consciousness that is flowing through every single one of us for today. Imagine you have the volume control on the knowingness that you are this eternal spiritual energy. Turn up your knowingness as high as it will go. What does that feel like to know without any doubt that you are the most powerful, indestructible, eternal, infinite energy in this entire universe? Practice knowing this divine presence is you all day today. Initiate and integrate this knowingness 
while you work, eat, drive, play, and engage in conversation with others. I'll join in the meditation, and I'll return to close us out.
take an easy, slow breath in through the nose, and an easy, slow breath out through the mouth. Be still. Feelings are what make life extremely rich and juicy. They give your life dimension and create a more intimate and personal experience of reality. Your feelings enable you to heal yourself as well as accept the infinite mystery of life. For today, allow yourself to let down your protective shields with the world and explore how you really feel about yourself, others, and the world today. Give yourself permission to feel everything and anything you can. Invite in and explore every type of feeling that comes into your body today. Confront the feelings you've been avoiding and breathe deeply into them. Sit with them and simply feel them. Keep your mind and heart open to this rich, rewarding, egoless experience. This is your turn to be emotionally free. Trust your feelings. Stop resisting them. Dive into each one with an open heart, full of curiosity, wonder, and courage. When you stop trying to manage and control your emotions, they will transform you from the inside out. Take this with you for the rest of the day and to the evening and night and the following morning. And we will return here Monday, May 2nd, 2022, 3 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation call.